This interview is brought to you in association with Rabobank. Hello and welcome to another NOW series of Rural Delivery online interviews for 2016. In the middle of May this year, Dairy NZ held their biennial forum for farmers. One of the keynote speakers there was General Manager of Rabobank's Food and Agribusiness Research and Advisory, Tim Hunt. Tim Hunt works in Australia and New Zealand and he joins me now. Tim, welcome. Good morning, Roger. Tim, you spoke to the forum about what's happening in global markets, what that means for New Zealand dairy farmers, and a little bit about what the future might look like. Can you just give us a flavour of what your message was? Yeah. The, the key message, Roger, we were looking to deliver uh, to, to the farmers is that at the moment world markets remain heavily oversupply and there's, there's little prospect of a strong recovery in the short term. But we do see things that will help turn this market round as we move through the next season. We'll be looking at an improvement in milk prices next year, but it, but it will be slow rather than quick. Great that it was a good news story. When you look back at what's happened, are you laying the blame anywhere in particular? How did we, or the industry, get it wrong in terms of that supply and demand equation? Part of the problem originates from the extreme peaks we saw in 2013-14 where we saw whole milk powder trade above $5,000 per tonne for almost a year and by doing so we excited um, investment in dairy farming uh, you know, from, from China to Brazil. So we're always going to generate a wave of milk that hit the market and, and squeeze off some of our uh, consumption base. Um, on top of that we then saw a range of shocks including Russia banning imports of dairy from key suppliers, uh, Chinese demand for imports fell uh, suddenly, and Europe um, removed quotas which enabled their farmers to increase production substantially for the first time in about 25 years. So those factors exacerbated what was a fairly predictable downturn and have left us with a much longer and more severe downturn than we otherwise might have expected. Could we have behaved differently? I think as an industry it's difficult for New Zealand to avoid this volatility. Uh, around 95% of the milk is still exported and while New Zealand has done some great work to establish free trade agreements and, and customer relationships, when the market turns down it's normally the imported product that's pushed out of these markets. So for example China really defended its domestic production base at the expense of New Zealand product. Uh, so it's difficult for the industry to do too much. Uh, I think the question really comes for, for farmers as to uh, whether they position themselves in terms of their operational um, situation, cost base and debt um, in the way that, that, that um, enabled them to be comfortable in this kind of downturn. You're optimistic that we've seen this through or seen the worst of it through and that medium term, the outlook's looking brighter. What are the signals you're seeing that are helping you reach that conclusion? I've seen a couple of important um, thresholds being crossed. One of them is that milk prices have belatedly started to fall at the farm gate in Europe, um, pushing prices below the operating costs of, of production uh, in parts of, of Northern Europe and, and, and Southern Europe. Uh, that's extremely important in terms of uh, slowing down the strong growth we've seen in the last 12 months in that region. Uh, we've also seen prices fall heavily in Australia and to a lesser extent the US also, which will slow down production growth there. Uh, on the demand side, importantly the Chinese market has rebalanced. Production there has slowed down, demand's still growing and we're working through the excess stocks they were carrying in that market. And China's starting to import uh, at least the same volumes it was 12 months rather than continually reducing them and in some months buying substantially more. So as, as that demand starts to improve and we put the brakes on, on production, the things that are happening right now will help us uh, lead to a, a, a steady uh, but slow recovery through the back half of this year. If we dig a bit deeper into that, growth and demand, what are the fundamentals behind that? What sort of consumer behaviours, what sort of en economic environment or growth environments do we need to see, I guess in, in a number of markets around the world, to really see that, that consumer demand pick up in a meaningful way? 
dairy consumption is still highly income sensitive, particularly in emerging markets. Uh, so economic growth, uh, wage growth and employment growth is, is very important in sustaining demand growth. Uh, we also see that the trends we talk about more broadly in terms of westernization of diets and urbanization also supporting dairy consumption. But the thing we can't forget is that particularly in, in these emerging markets like China, like Indonesia, uh, like parts of North Africa, consumption is also price sensitive. Um, so that growth that, that occurs as people get more wealthier um, is sensitive to, to the price we're asking them to pay for the product. And if we charge too much, we can choke off that demand growth. What is it then that might, I guess that you're, you've got an eye out for, that might make this predicted uh, uh, rebalancing in the marketplace and this growth, what are the things that you're worried about happening that might slow that reality down? There, there are two key risks that we're thinking about most prominently at the moment. Uh, to that recovery. One is that we are factoring in a, a slowdown in EU production growth. If we've got that wrong, if, if EU farmers prove more resilient that, that, than we think or have more financial power uh, to keep producing milk um, than, than we think, uh, then that will lead to more milk on the world market and, and a slower recovery. Uh, the other one is, is more technically but still important, the value of the US dollar. Uh, the stronger the US dollar is, uh, the, the lower uh, the price on, on export markets uh, will, will be as producers in other regions are able to produce more competitively at any US dollar level. So uh, they're, they're two factors we're keeping an eye on that, that may yet snuff out um, the recovery we expect. Oh, well, and I guess on the other side of things, is there anything that would give it a boost? Yeah, there were, absolutely. And there are always upside risks as well as downside risks. Um, they can come from a, a number of avenues. You know, history tells us um, that, that, that weather um, can send pricing up when we when we haven't anticipated it. A, a drought in a major production region, and, and also disease risk. Uh, things like foot and mouth disease are endemic in many of the importing markets we service, um, and that was part of the Chinese story back in. 2012-13, an outbreak of foot and mouth disease really decimated their herd and, and led to the need to import huge volumes. So uh, we keep an eye on those things. Um, and, and while we don't wish ill on producers in any regions, though those sort of factors could trigger a better season uh, for New Zealand. Um, but it's not our primary expectation. As farmers here and the broader industry look forward to that, maybe slow, but you know, hopefully predictable growth curve that comes back, what are the lessons that you think they should be reflecting on most of all from this downturn? Well, I think the, f the first reflection is that this isn't new. It, it, it's worse than we've seen, uh, but we have since 2008 seen three major downturns in 2009, 2012, and now this one. And uh, many people in the industry, including ourselves, have highlighted that this volatility is now typical of this market and and while we'll improve going forward we'll see another downturn probably like this at some point in the next 10 years i think that uh, that is is worth bearing in mind uh, for, for producers uh, in new zealand and, and in particular they should consider the amount of, of, of debt that, that they're happy to carry in in several regions of the world at the last peak in prices um, dairy farmers paid down a lot of debt um, mainly to de-risk their business so they'd be more comfortable when the next downturn came. We didn't see the same emphasis on that in New Zealand. Um, some people will still be comfortable with their debt levels through this downturn, but we just highlight uh, to the industry um, the, the need to, to carefully consider uh, what you want to do when things get better in terms of maintaining a low cost base and, and, and perhaps not taking on too much debt um, so you position yourself for the next downturn, uh, as well as just you know, the not more normal seasons. Is that a quiet way of you signalling that you're a little bit concerned about the debt levels that we've got in our dairy industry? I think that um, that's a case-by-case -case situation. Uh, for many people, the, the, the debt levels they carry are entirely sensible uh, and sustainable. Um, for, for others, that the pressure they're seeing at the moment uh, is extreme. Um, and 
it's up to them, um, but I think it's worth carefully considering when things get better, um, what they'd like to carry into the next downturn. One last thing before we go. Have you done any specific analysis on the impact of, of trade agreements on what this, uh, what the next, say, the three to five years might look like for New Zealand? New Zealand has positioned itself extremely well in terms of, of trade agreements, uh, in terms of getting the jump on the competition, in, t in terms of free trade with China in particular, and the relationships it's built off the back of that, and the investment that's come through as a result of that. Um, other nations are catching up somewhat uh, in China, um, and that's something uh, New Zealand has to work hard to stay ahead of. Uh, we'd love to see a trans-Pacific partnership, w which would lead to some incremental gains for New Zealand. Uh, hopefully that gets passed for the, but, uh, by the US, where, where there's some chance it will not. Uh, but, but that will see incremental gains rather than a step change. They're, they're hard-earned gains and well worth it, but incremental rather than transformational. Brilliant. Look, Tim, thank you very much for your time today. We greatly appreciate it, and we'll talk to you again in the future. All right. Thanks, Roger. Appreciate it. This interview was brought to you in association with Rabobank.